Hey guys, it's Sound Engineer Barry. I'm out of the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities area. I do sound for a lot of bands. And I recently worked with a new band that um, had feedback issues with their lead singer's mic. And before I worked with them, they had informed me that they had worked with other sound engineers and they had this persistent problem with the sound guys keeping that mic from feeding back. Well, this, of course, was no deterrent to me because my shows never have feedback. Well, they, they, they rarely have feedback. Um, you know, I've done this for a while. I, I'm pretty good at managing my gains and uh, ringing out the system for those uh, areas where it tends to be a little unstable. And so my shows almost never have feedback. But, you know, that can happen to the best of us. Sometimes things happen, like singers decide to put the mic right into their vocal wedge on stage or something. But generally not a problem. So I wasn't too worried about that, but uh, they were right. They were right. Um, when I started pushing up their lead vocalist's signal levels, soon the thing would just get unstable as soon as I started getting the vocals anywhere near where I wanted them in the mix. And uh, I was kind of surprised at how touchy it is because from what I could see, their singer was actually doing a generally pretty good job of microphone handling. Um, a little bit of this business of getting your hands on the bottom of the grill, but not too bad. And if you cover up the grill of the microphone with your hands, that makes it more omnidirectional, so the microphone then becomes more sensitive to sounds coming in from the rear or the sides. And that can bring in some splash and background noise, which doesn't help keep your vocals nice and clear in the mix. But, but I didn't see a whole lot of that behavior going on. And uh, the band's using good equipment. There's really nothing wrong with the equipment that they're using, so I can't blame it on uh, low-performance hardware. But the system was really touchy. And it wasn't until a little bit into the game that I figured out just what was going on, which is, as the band is playing, I'm turning up the channel on that mic, and it's working. As I push it up, the vocals are coming up, but... I don't know, I'm just not feeling like I'm getting the response that I would expect to get. It just um, told me that I'm not getting enough clean, clear vocals into that channel. And uh, upon further investigation, that was definitely the case. That microphone is picking up way too much background noise. And the vocals that were coming into that mic were actually buried in all of the background noise that the mic was picking up. So as I shoved up that mic level... Sure, I was getting more vocals in the mix, but I was also just adding to the mix a lot more of the background splash noise, ambient stuff that was in the vicinity. And that ambient noise certainly didn't help the vocals come through any more clearly. And so it puts you into a situation where you just can't win because you don't have a clean signal source to, to mix with. Uh, you can push up the level as far as you want, but you'll never get the vocals out of the mix because the vocals are already buried in the mix of nonsense that's coming into that mic right to begin with. So the answer to that situation is uh, we could swap out the mic for a mic with a tighter polar pattern so it rejects sound off the rear and sides more. We could uh, encourage the singer to sing louder so that their volume is greater than the volume of the background stuff that's coming into the mic. And we can ask the singer to um, be mindful of the distance between the microphone and their mouth and uh, close up that distance as much as possible so that you get more volume into the mic. And uh, there's an inverse square law happening there. So if you're right on top of the microphone, it makes a big difference than being just a little bit back. And of course, once you're a little bit back, you can continue to move around and it still doesn't make that much difference. But if you're on a loud stage and you've got a lot of uh, ambient noise, it uh, helps to get yourself right directly on top of that microphone so that you can overcome, you know, you can help overcome some of the other stuff that's happening around you. It wasn't until I uh, was able to isolate that one particular channel and just listen to what's coming off that mic to realize just how bad the... Uh, ambient bleed into the mic is and it was really surprising and and that was obviously the cause of the feedback because with all that ambient noise in there I was just pushing the channel higher and higher trying to get clear vocals and I was never going to get clear vocals with that signal source. So there's a tip for you. If you find yourself in a situation where 
you know, generally you can control feedback pretty well, but in this case it just seems squirrely. Make sure that the signals that you're getting in off your mics are actually clean, clear signals, and so you have something to work with, and you're not just boosting up a whole bunch of ambient noise that that uh, microphone is picking up. Anyway, just a tip for you, something that I recently experienced, and uh, I wish you well. I wish you happy band mixing and a lot of good shows ahead, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks, guys.